Hey everyone, Kyle once again. <clears throat> Welcome back to another uh, movie review. And back to reviewing um, another uh, Steven Seagal film. And it's another one that I um, I do enjoy watching. Um, and like I said, year 1990, um, viewing films like from year 1996, because you know, 20, 20, 20th anniversary, because like I said, year 2006, 2016. So I just want to feel like we're reviewing films for the 20th anniversaries of what films that came out in, the, in 1996. So like I, I like for the past uh, couple of few views, like um, I've been reviewing films that have been came out in 1996. So you can check those out. Um, but this is another. This is another, this is a Steven Seagal film that came out in 1996 that I do enjoy watching. And like I said, um, perhaps this before though, but with Steven Seagal, you know, just you know, both of those good movies there. That work they did came out then, the late '80s and then then the '90s. You know, this is then like from this on. You know, he's been doing nothing but directed video films, and to say that none of his films have been good since the film he did in the late '80s and then in the, in the '90s. This one I really do enjoy, and this one is the Glimmer Man. Starring Steven Seagal, like I said, and uh, Keenan Irie, Irie Waynes, you know, one of the the Waynes brothers. And the Glitter Man is, like I said, it's another ac Steven Seagal action film, and it's directed by a guy named John Gray, which I'm not all that familiar with. Look in some things up; he's directed like um, some television, um, television, well, you know, film <clears throat> films made for television. He directed a film called Born to be Wild, which I have not seen. But this film I do I do I do enjoy and when it came out like during it came out um, in October nineteen ninety six. The film flopped sadly. On a budget of forty five million made about twenty. Which is, you know, and has get, get, did get negative reviews. It's a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes, which doesn't deserve. 5.3 B. I would give it higher. Disagree with. And and the film is not that long of a movie. It's only like about 92 minutes. Without the end credit, without end credits, it's less than 80, um, less than 90 minutes. Goes at a very good pace. I didn't think it was that. I don't think it was that boring. So it was very decently well paced, and the actions I action scenes I do enjoy. Steven Seagal, um, working with uh, Keen Ivory Waynes, I thought it was a good um, buddy cop movie. Um, and of course, Keen Ivory Waynes, you know, we're doing the co doing the comedy films. Um, I know that he directed that Keenan Ivory Wayans. I know he directed Scary Movie One and Two, and I do like Scary Movie One and Two with then three and four, and I did not like and then number five, which was the worst one. But he did, but he directed he did direct Scary Movie One and Two, and I do like the first two ones. And and I thought I, and I thought they I thought they both they both work well together. Um, the story is that, um, there's this, uh, serial killer called the Family Man, and he's, like, um, Ali Haley, the guy, he's, he's, he's a guy who, um, likes, uh, you know, she, there's, like, this, he finds a couple, and shoots them in the head, and then the, um, <clears throat> hangs them up on the walls, like, um, like Jesus, right? You know, like, the cross, you know, hang them like Jesus, you know, even puts, like, um, the thorny crowns on their heads, and... You no, know, nail them with their hands and feet like the way Jesus was on the cross. So they they hangs them up on the walls like that. Even even some leave some blade designs on the walls like a like a house or a stick figures and stuff. And Steven Seagal he plays Jack Cole. He's a um, LAPD police officer. Same and he gets um partner up with Keen Ivory Keen Ivory Waynes. And with his character is that you find out you know, that he never wins. He's like he's a guy. He you know he talks. You know he 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 does act. Tough. I mean he does like gets a good some 
punches in a lot, some of the action scenes, so he's not a weak, a weak guy, you know. He's a comic relief, but he's not also like a weak guy who's like, oh, we can't fight, worth the crap. But he can fight. He he does get some a lot of punches on some of the action scenes, so he can fight. He's not he's not a worthless cop who is just there to be comic relief. But um, and you know, more about his character is that he's also like um, he has like this allergic reaction to like the, these uh, sticks, you know, I forget what they're called that um. That, 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 that makes smoke, and um, he's a guy who also is a fan of uh, the old movie Casa, Casablanca. And like, there's this thing where he cry, he cry where he cries. He uh, the one scene where um, I forgot it was Humphrey Bogart um, reading that letter. It's the scene where he's in the movie theater watching the movie, and he's like crying and stuff, you know. And they like, get into action. The scene where he gets in the fight scene where the 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 guy he's had like has like stuff of posters and stuff. So he's Guy was a fan of all this old movie, and uh, with Steven Seagal, um, of course he like he's like he plays like another guy who's like a mysterious guy. He's like he's a he's not only a cop, but he's also did like um, military other military stuff back in the day and stuff, and nobody knows about him like totally black ops or under or something like that, you know. And that's why they hit the uh, and when he meets a uh, Brian Cox, who's also in the movie, calls him the Glimmer Man. You know, it's just, there's nothing but jungle. Well, it's because he was in Vietnam, where he found him, he's like, there's nothing but jungle, then a glimmer, then you'd be dead. So, but, um, they, these two, they get pardoned up, they're working on, they start working on this case about, um, this, uh, serial killer, and, um, uh, while they're going, they get a call, um, at this, um, Christian school, uh, that, that a, teen, that a teenager, is holding his class up with hostage because he broke up with his girlfriend and he has a gun. And I like where, um, where Steven Seagal, Jack Cole, he uh, thinks he makes a uh, on the on the the announcement, the box, the microphone, and but he's actually there as a diversion. And he gets in there, tries to talk to him. Um. And the one thing leads to know there he's about to he was about to shoot he was about to shoot himself and then uh, Jack uh, hurl, hurls him and and the kid from one window to another window of the next building and as then a fun where says the girlfriend that says I love you Johnny and says I love you and the kid says I love you and then Stephen goes Stephen Seagal says yeah I love you too so and which you see you'll you will see that kid later on again so. And then he gets to talk with his uh, stepfather, his uh, stepfather played by um, uh, Devereaux, Frank Devereaux, played by Bob Gunton, which you know that um, he is. Um, for if he's probably well, he's probably he's been in other films though, but he's probably well known. He's playing uh, to play um, the evil warden in um, the Shawshank Redemption. So. Yeah, he's in this movie as uh, the kid's stepfather, Mister uh, Devereaux. And and then when the thing is that they go back to they head back on this case and like uh, with their examining how the, the how this whole thing is and like when they examine a, a dead a dead woman and they say they thought that, that she's Russian because um like she had this she has this type of she died from this type of cancer and it was somehow I forget how it's related to um. Russian wall because also because I forgot she got like a a tattoo that had resembles of uh, the Russian mafia like a cross with thorns around it and indicated that she's Russian and um, or another thing at least another that uh, when they're driving they enter this um I forget like it's not it's not like an alley but um like an underground structure like a sort of like a parking lot but it's not. You see two guys start breaking car, but um, then there's more guys come. More guys come in, and they said they were they were gonna take them out. And um, I like where where Steven's other line with Steven Seagal says is um you know, referring to Kieran Irons like he's more country. I'm a little bit of rock and roll. Or I got or another um, I thought it was a pretty um, badass moment where um, he says oh I got a lot of money in my wallet. I'm gonna slowly take out my wallet. 
and you can take credit cards. I got thousands of dollars in this card, and all of a sudden he clicks it and turn the credit card turns into like a knife and slits three three guys' throats like all at once. You know, yeah, it's like this click, just slits slits three guys' uh, throats up here, up here, and here, like just like that. And it says, "Let's rock and roll," and it starts beating. It starts. They start punching. You know, kicking, and blocking, and whatever. Good action scene. And uh, even it shows that um, Keaton Edward Wayans, he fights. You know, like I said, he's not weak or just there to be comic relief. Though. He can fight. Um, even where Steven Scully kicks one guy off um, off ledge and one guy gets impaled, you know, like uh, the ending of a claw of a bulldozer. Impales that guy. And um, even Keaton Edward Wayans is saying, I thought, you, I thought you said you can't fight. And he says, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to fight. It's against my, it's against my religion. <laughs> Um, or they try, he tries to speak, get this guy to, who says, who sent you? And, uh, Keaton Edward Wayans as, um, uh, Campbell is his name. He says, here, maybe I can speak to him. Because these guys are all, all, um, Russian as well. And he says, can you, do you speak, um, he's like, uh, Seagal's like, do you speak Russian? Yeah, a little bit. Starts bashing the guy against, against the car, says, oh, that's pretty good Russian. Yeah, black Russian. <laughs> so... Uh, the, so, uh, the Keenan Iron Wayans, I thought he was pretty funny, though. Um. <sighs> I don't know why, I remember seeing a review recently, I've been, been yawning. Not because I'm tired, but maybe it's because, I don't know, maybe, yeah, I'm yawning to every, I don't know why. Maybe it's because every single review, I'm not yawning, I don't know why, but, but I'm not tired, though, but. Um, but, at least, <clears throat> another, another thing that they, they're continuing on this case, and, and then one, and then one thing to listen to another is that um, the killer, he enters another house, and he shoots another couple, and then and eventually you know that, that there's this couple where this woman that that when the Jack go the Jack knows because it was his ex-wife, it was his ex-wife and or her her husband her new husband got shot and killed and you now they're strung up you know same way like the couple in the beginning, and. And the the, the the department gets a little suspicious, suspicious because about about Seagal because that was his ex wife that got murdered. So they figured they figured that he had something to do with, had something to do with it. And and well and and like I said, the, uh, they go they go to the, they do the, their um, funeral to his, his ex wife's uh, funeral with her his with his new wife and his kids. Like as the scene was, is I got I got I got to go tell my kids that their mother is dead. So, and, and then, and then, uh, Keenan Ivory Wayans, he starts get, get, getting some info about Jack Cole, about figuring out who he is, because he, because he, because he, he says, oh, you know, he, this guy's like Bruce Lee, you know, he does all this kung fu, he's like, he dresses like, he dresses like a monk, does all this kung fu stuff, and yet also, um, Jack Cole wears these beads that he, he, like, he constantly wears, or getting yeah, another funny in instance where, um, where, because he, uh, he goes to this um, Asian place, a uh, Chinese place, um, and 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 uh, I thought it was enough funny to see where um, where uh, King Ever Wayne's um, he gets like uh, he sneezes into the the smoke stuff I guess, and then she goes into this um, here try this, puts it on your tongue, clears the sinuses right up, and says, oh this is bitter, what is this? Oh it's just some powdered powdered deer penis. He's like blah blah blah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I forgot to mention that part, but that's another funny scene. And so, and so after the funeral, he go he go he goes he goes to this uh, restaurant where he meets with uh, Brian Cox. Um, <laughs> or where so when he walks in the door, there's this there's this uh, guy at the desk, you know, says, "Oh, he's he speak on the phone." Where this uh, to this customer says, "Oh, you can't you you can't come over here." And the guy and see the just knocks the guy out and says, right, "Come over, come on over. We'll give you a table." And there's a um, another guy who um who's not laying a pass and says, "You know, just goes and throws goes and throws him around." Um, and he says, "You know, you know, you take your little point, you take your little ponytail and your little sissy beads and get out of here." And pushes that same guy through um a window, glass window. And he uh, talks with Brian Cox, and he tries to get some information. 
He doesn't. Do, he doesn't tell him much. And he goes and speaks um with the same guy. And says, "You ever try to pull shit again? I'll kill you." And all your um, all all you Chine um, what was it um, and all your and all your Chinese um potions, whatever, won't be able to heal. And so, he, and it was like it was like said for something about Chinese potions and stuff like that. And Steven Steven Seagal says um. You know, you shouldn't knock Chinese potions, because I got something in my pocket that can completely clear up that bruise in your forehead. What bruise? That bruise. <laughs> that was that was that was that was in the trailer as well, so that was another fun another funny um good a uh, good line is you know, that bruise. Punches him in the head, beats up some more beats some more guy like um where oh uh one guy is doing a kicking and leads him Smacks his head right and against his pole. And while this is going on, Brian Cox is sitting there eating his lunch. He's like doing this, you know, looking like this and eating his stuff and drinking. As as it, as he's watching, Stevens like all kicking ass because because he's um <clears throat> he's a, he's a guy that was thinking, who knew who, who knew who Stevens Seagal was back Jack Cole back in when he recruited him. That's why he called him the Glimmer Man. And um, and as as he leaves, the phone rings. He's like, "Hello, Lenthos." Oh no, that was no, that that would do no good. We're closed for renovation. I would say about two months. <laughs> I mean, this is why that is what I thought that the the students go back in the during the, mostly during the nineties and of course their late eighties when he got started. You know. The, the 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 some of the comedy and the action I thought it was really was really good you know when then he starts doing all these well sort all these directed video he's probably probably doing like about thirty of them over the past what probably since after since the start out like after um because because the half past De half past dead was like about two thousand two I think it was and he hasn't and then I don't think that was the last um theoretical release film that he did and since he's been doing nothing but directed videos until Machete, which that was not good. But then since then still more directed video stuff. That's why I always use the film he did like in the late er, late eighties and the nineties were the best. Because the lines, action, comedy and stuff aspect that were handled well and funny as well got a laugh out of it. So, after that, um, they finally, they, they finally get, a, they finally get a lead who, they think who actually did it, who's been doing all the killings, which is actually, is actually, they, they, they find out who got a lead was by the name of Christopher, um, who is actually, um, who, was because they, because they, they finally, because, uh, Keenan Evan Wayne's uh, went to see because he got like a a drawing that this guy did, and the, the somehow it lead to him. And they find uh, Stephen Skull knows about. It. He went to see him at the church, and that he that he's he was the guy who actually uh, he's the guy who actually be doing all the murders though. But he he, but he tells us uh, Jack that he didn't murder his um his ex wife and her husband. They said that someone else has someone else has had been sent. So he didn't murder them, but he murdered all the other people. But he didn't murder his, his ex wife and her husband. So because he said someone else has been sent, and he's trying to tell him who uh, who else, and he's saying trying to tell him who else has been, who else did it, you know, and well, well he has done it in the past, but he's but he's been doing, uh, but someone else been implicating. Making seem like that that serial killer did. Someone's been duplicating the work. Uh, that's what's trying to p mainly put it, though. He's done this in the past though, but someone else recently has been doing duplicating all the murders, including his ex, his ex wife and her husband. Um. And then uh, he he's, he was trying to talk about like oh I'm trying to he was he was trying to kill himself, but um he was and then he starts pointing the gun at Jack and he shoots him in self defense. And uh, the police chief is not happy about it, though, and they want him and Kevin Iron Williams in, in internal affairs, you know, doing like the truth test, or and 
it's like uh, as he's doing the lie detecting test, it's like, um, is your name Jack Cole? Yes. Have you ever climbed have you ever climbed Mount Everest? And he's like, Yes. Very calmly. And as he leaves, everything reads true. And then the chief that is it as the the chief's talking in the bathroom, you know, says, you know, give me your badge, you're a suspect in your ex wife's murder and he throws his he throws his badge in the one of the in the to in the urinals and says, Which one of those did you just piss in? <laughs> so and then he goes he goes to see um Christopher's house that was like all ruined in the inside and he meets um he can, he he counters uh, the real guy did but we don't know who it is though well we do know who it is but he didn't know who it was and it's actually one of the guy um Frank Darabol's um uh guy his basically his basically his right hand man so to speak named Donald he's the one who's been doing he's the one who's been doing all the, all the murders and and then and then, it, then I, I'm not sure if it was the same guy or it was another guy that was fighting with Keenan Key Reigns. I always wonder. I'm sure, we, pretty sure it was the same guy who was fighting with Keenan Reigns as well. Well, before that, um, no, 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 no. Actually, no. Actually, no. Um, it was, it was, it was, it was Keenan. It was Keenan Reigns first. Um. Yeah, but I'm sure it was the same guy Donald who's who attacked him, and he gets into gets into a scuffle in his in his apartment and starts a fire. The gas uh, the gas line breaks as he's and he as the whole plus his whole, his whole apartment blows up. He jumps out the window, lands in the car as he sees a poster of Casablanca being burned up, and then two other guys from the from the Russian mafia who claims they're from Eternal Affairs takes a uh, cigar in their car. And it's pouring down rain. Um, he sees the, the as the guy raises the rearview mirror, he sees um, the tattoo of the Russian mafia, and speaks. He starts speaking Russian, and then one of the guys reaches the back seat to shoot him. He takes the gun away and starts beating the heck out of the one in the passenger seat with the handle of the gun, just beating him, beating him. You know, the guy has all bloody face and stuff. And then one of the car flips over, he gets out of it, and the car runs into a gas truck, explodes, and he goes to see um, uh, Wayne's in his, um, his his now his burned up apartment, and he see, he sees all the the box of the all the oh the, the stuff that he tried on earth the try, stuff that he tried earlier, you know. It was on the it was on the power deer painters. It was the other stuff they tried first. And he finds a whole box of it, and he's like, "Oh, it was a free sample of stuff." And it's like, "Oh, can I use the CDs? I look, I can use those." Or he says, "Um, did you actually live in this shit box?" And then because uh, he because he uh, Kieran Wayne's he had some stuff written down. It was a number they wrote they 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 found um that his ex that his um ex wife his her husband was a shrink, and he made a call. To this place, which is actually um, this um, the team, you know, the team, the teenager Johnny that uh, Seagal put through the window. That was those the um, holding the school, hold who was holding up at the school. Um, at least that Johnny was he made the phone call from his girlfriend's place because he said he was he was afraid to call from home because his stepdad is involved with some. Um, Uh, uh, s smuggling weapons basically, and he found out about it. And uh, Devil doesn't want to doesn't want to kill his stepson, so he has some has someone else has to do it, you know. But he found out he found he found out about what stuff I was up to, so he's going he was going to get killed. Like um, he's been sent at the um, this um place where um, I forget what this place was like where all the nuns are at and stuff and. They shoot the guy who was sit there to kill him because it was Brian Cox who's been, who was, is who was working with uh, Bob Gunton. So, and he tells anyway, she tells him about the story about how Seagal was the Glimmer Man. So, and then, so Johnny tells him about uh, um, that 
about he, why um, it, with the stuff I, stuff I was involved in, and that shows that Brian Cox is involved in it as well. And he, they, they go to see Brian. They go. They they get Brian Cox. They kidnap him. They drag him to an alley and tries to tell him what's what's um well this whole thing is about. And Sigal start first shoots him in the foot and then shoots him in the hand and tells him then forces to tell him everything that um he's like is a devil uh, is selling weapons to the with the with to the rough to the Russian mafia. And they have a re they have a recorded all on tape so, and they um as they leave and Brian Cox is like um you mind calling me an ambulance and he said and Seagal says I only sh I only shot you in one foot hobble to a hospital and they just drive off and leaves him there <laughs> so and they and then yeah they um he calls calls Bob Gunton he hears the recording confession and. And he wants to, and wants to, to say the same that there's a bunch of these, um, and then uh, the Russian, Russian terrorists, as, as, uh, as, uh, as King Edward Wayne says, there are a bunch of, um, Russian fighters, I think there was, I forget what they were called, but they were fighters and stuff like that. And Seagal's telling, uh, uh, Bob Gunton, you know, that, um, he wants, he wants Donald, and you turn the tape, your name gets clean. Your, my, my name gets clean. Your name stays clean. Everyone's happy. So then, so then, um, then uh, Kieran, and I, Kieran and I Wayne's he calls he calls Donald and tells him about the confession. And tells him about gives him here makes him hear the recording of Seagal and De uh, Bob Gunton and says, "Guess your ass just got sold down the river, shithead." So, and they're gonna be meeting at this um place called um. It's a hotel. I'll just call it that way. I'll just call it a hotel. And as they, they get the they're, they get the hotel, Donald um, tells uh, tells tells Devro about that he heard the whole thing about this about to sell him to Cole. Um, shoots him, and then you get this. Then they then they then uh, uh, Jack and Campbell they get in there. There's this big shootout. Shooting all the bad guys, some good uh, practical blood squibs, as you can see, if you can see, I notice. Then uh, uh, Devil was still was still alive, but then Donald shoots him in the head, and he he gets away as all the other uh, guys are dead. Um, they split up. Uh, Keenan Wayans gets shot in the shoulder out the window. Um, so Jack seems like all climbs down the roof from the roof. Grabs him and they swing through another window, and he gets ahead of it. He gets ahead of Donald, locks the door. Then, and then when then at least this beef, this big fight, which ends up that uh, Stephen Skull beats the living crap out of this guy, starts beating up, beating him up like, <laughs> where the guy is just like um, where the which Jack says, "Give me your best shot." No, I said best shot. Boring. And because the guy just keeps on like, kicking and kicking, and, just, and Stephen Skull is just like blocking like this, and that's why he says boring. And then, and then the just get, and then the guy just gives him one punch like this, poof, gives him a bloody nose, but he's like, that's nothing, you know. Basically, he's like, is that the best you is that the best you got? Then I'm just gonna kill you. Or or another line that um, they said before that fight, this says um, here we are, here we are. You know, I bet you that uh, you every day you get out of bed and you look in the mirror, and you look and you look you look at yourself, please what you see, and that disturbs me. So I'm gonna make sure that you'll never look at yourself again. And he says, "I'm I went to bed happy. I'm gonna go to bed. I wake up happy because you're gonna be dead." And then, and at least another day, he goes and throws a guy out this window, or this, and he says, "Guess you guess you look like you're not gonna wake up happy now." And sees that he the um, he the guy got impaled like through the chin onto this uh one of the barbed spiky things or where um where the death where the reception desk is like the, the, these bar these are big pointy spiky things I forget what they're called but he seemed that he got impaled through the chin like up to here and and so um as a uh, Campbell is getting taken away in the ambulance is like um 
And he's like, he's tell, he tells Cole that, um, you know, it's best we don't see each other for a while. Something I said. No, I was just that ever since he started being my partner, I've been beat up, blown up, shot, kicked out of a window, all my worldly possessions burned to a crisp. Basically, I'm homeless. Now, one good thing now now one good thing has happened since I met you. Oh, but you but you got to try but you got to try, blah, but you got to try power deer prints. That's a good that's that's a good thing. <laughs> and he's and he's still he's still and then Campbell still keeps on going. Don't ever call me Jack. Don't ever send me a me don't don't call me. Don't send me a message. Don't send me flowers. You know. So I just been taken away in the ambulance. <laughs> So yeah, the Glimmer Man. I had fun with the movie. It's too bad the film. This film flopped, but I enjoyed the movie. Steven Seagal. I, they did a great job. Keenan Ivory Wayne's. Even though he was he was the comic comic relief, he wasn't as weak. He got he did do fighting. He did do some fighting. He wasn't all weak and like oh I'm a comic relief. I'm the the funny cop. You know I'm just whatever. He was he he was not weak. He did he did get some fighting in so. So he was—he was not all there just to be the comic relief. He did get to fight. Um, but I thought, I thought these two worked. I thought these two worked well together, and um, the fight scenes I thought was was well choreographed. I should say, the the fun, the, the, the humor I did like, especially when um now with now with Keenan Ivory Wayne's with Steven Seagal as well. Um, the pacing I thought was was pretty was pretty decent. It wasn't boring, and it was a short movie, so. Only ninety minutes, basically. Uh, the story, you know, with them with the Russian mafia and um, you know, you know them connect, trying to connect the dots about the whole serial killer, you know, about the whole thing. And but overall, that was it was a pretty it was a, it was a, it was a pretty it was a very good um, Steven Seagal movie for especially for a nineties one. It was a good, especially all the ones that he did during the nineties. I absolutely do. I do enjoy. You know, let's say from you know, Above the Law, um, Hard to Kill, um, Exit Wounds. This film, Out for Justice, the Under Siege films one and two. Um, this is this, and what other ones I do? I forget what all these. He did the nineties. Oh. oh, Mark for Death. That's another. That's another one. Um, Fire down below. That was getting to the late nineties. Um, oh, um, on Deadly Ground. That's another one. Even though the act, I love it as an action film, but the whole environmental thing, though, it's a different story, though. But on Deadly Ground as an action film, I do enjoy. It's another one. The Patriot that was a directed video that was a directed video one, not theoretical release though. But that was a, the late nineties. And so then some of them then started the penny anyway, started to go down because I'm half past half past dead. I'm not particularly a fan of. Uh but then it just started as all of his directed video films. But The Good Man is it was an, it's another good um nineties Steven Seagal film. Him and Keenan, him and Keenan Ivory Wayne's. I thought they were pretty well, uh, pretty well. They worked well together. The, the other support, the supporting cast, like Bob Gunton and um, Brian Cox, which I like. Brian Cox and um, Bob Gunton. I thought he was, I thought he was there as well. So, yeah, the Glitter Man. If anyone was, if, if anyone was a fan of Steven Seagal or ha or have not seen the seen the film with Steven Seagal yet. Check. Go. I would. I would say. I, I would recommend it. Good. Good old '90s action film. I don't think it's not that. It's not, I don't think it's not that bad. I don't think it didn't deserve to flop. But like I said, 20th anniversary for during for the year 1996. It's another one. It's, it's one that's worth watching. So the. So yeah, 20th anniversary for. Uh, my my review of it of the Glimmer Man. That didn't sound right to me. The Glimmer Man. I. I that last part didn't sound like this. the Glimmer Man. That's much better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned on the next movie review. And see you next time. Later.